four years ago and actually bought a piece of furniture to store my music. It was looked like a dresser, it was camouflaged like a dresser, and it's actually if you pulled out this, these drawers to store CDs, how many of you have those? <laughs> and now I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I use it as a countertop, right? And the point is most of us acquire our music digitally these days, and it, it requires a different kind of storage that we don't even see, it's somewhere in the cloud. Um, so that's, that's what's happened to the media music industry, and we think video will actually be the killer app in the next phase of the internet. And how will we video change? You know, it's going to consume huge amounts of bandwidth, which is good for us, Cisco, because we love anything that needs a lot of bandwidth. Um, but it also is going to put a lot of restrictions on storage, because if high density video, you're taking, I, I hope you're using a flip. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, that's a high density video uh, device, user generated content, and you can share that with flip share, just like iTunes, you can share it with your community. But to store all that video is going to take a lot of storage capacity. So how do we search, how will we provide relevance to this video? That's going to be the challenge on the internet going forward, to really become a media experience platform. Second, I talk about collaboration. To make it a more a collaboration platform instead of a messaging platform. That means we have to incorporate concepts like social networking within the enterprise environment and allow us to go into the consumer web applications like Facebook and Twitter. I'm a big user of Twitter. And, and I use it for many different reasons, for personal reasons as well as work-related reasons. And somehow if I can capture, and I have over a million followers on Twitter, but if I can capture that leverage to, do, to help me do some of my work, that would be the biggest um, leverage that we can get from the consumer web as well as the enterprise network. So next area is going to be sustainability. And I talked a little bit about the role of the internet and the role of the network in things like smart grid making, um, you know, looking at alternative energies and making the ecosystem better from the beginning, right? All of these things are going to require the network to play a much broader role than we had done so in the past. And lastly, the architectures are going to be much more distributed, much more virtualized, moving more towards the cloud as well as having on-premise capabilities. And the federation between the two has to be played um, and enabled by the network. So that's our vision of where we think the internet will evolve to in the next five, 10 years. So at Cisco, uh, at Cisco, we are making investments and consider these four areas to be significant priorities for, for our company and for our partners and our customers. Video, collaboration, smart connected communities, which includes smart grid and healthcare and some of the other things that I mentioned, and virtualization and cloud computing. Switching gears now, let's look at what role have women played um, as leaders in technology, right? And, and women have been contributing to technology and the industry at large for many, many years. And so these are some of uh, my role models going way back. And um, I, I hope some of you share interest in some of these uh, women leaders. And if not, it'll be good trivia to have next time you play Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> um, so, so the first pioneer, I would say, in this space is a woman named Mary Dixon Keys. And she was the first woman in 1809, I think, was issued a first US patent. Yeah, it says 1809 there. Um, US patent for a process of weaving silk into hats. And so think back, you know, 1800s, that was an innovation, right? So hats were a big thing, and, and she figured out how to incorporate silk and straw together and whatever fabric was. So foundational materials technology breakthrough with respect to science. Ada Lovelace, how many of you have heard of Ada Lovelace? Okay, people, people usually in the computer science field know her. Um, 1843, she wrote the initial specifications for Babbage's analytical engine. By the way, this was probably the beginning of computer science. So anytime anybody tells you that computer science and software is a man's field, Tell them wrong. It was actually a woman that pioneered and created the field of computer science. And so she is um, attributed with coming up with the specifications for that. Hedy Lamar, how many of you have heard of her? Hollywood actress, right? Um, beautiful, gorgeous, glamorous personality. So she was the one that came up with a communication system which allowed us to change out of frequencies for the transmit and the receive portion, which later became, by the way, the wireless technology foundation for wireless communications and was able to, in World War II, create a secret encrypted coding message using communications as a breakthrough. And she's a glamorous, um, beautiful personality. So 
Anytime somebody tells you that we may be in technology or geeks, um, <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's a role model that has changed that. Um, Grace Hopper, Grace Hopper, I'm sure many of you heard of. Um, again, was one of the uh, pioneers in the computer science field. And her work today probably is, uh, was the foundation to COBOL, one of the foundational languages uh, that le led to the evolution of uh, computer programming like, uh, in, in that e era. So the point here is that it takes many different styles and capabilities to contribute to the body of knowledge in the, in the field of science, technology, and the commercialization of that. Right? And all the examples I picked were not just examples of somebody that just did something in a lab. I mean, they created industries and they created basic notions of how communications gets done, uh, wireless communication or programming gets done. So the foundational aspects of invention as well as commercializing that technology. So how is the role of women going to change in the future? And this isn't just in technology. I would say this is probably you can think of it as women leaders, how has this changed? So if you look back to the women that I, that I uh, chose to uh, show you, the words that come to mind are the pioneers. They pioneered, they were the first one to come up with something. They were trailblazers. There was nobody out there and they created a trail. They were different. You know, they had to be different to be successful. And they essentially worked alone. They were solo contributors because there was no way at the time to have a network like, like we do today or have a way to share experiences or learn experiences on a social network on the internet or physically like we're doing today. And they were mostly, their experiences were instructional. You know, it was more about teaching what they had. So how will this change going forward? More and more leaders and women leaders have to become influencers. Uh, it's all about, it's, it's important to be a pioneer, meaning you've done something first, but you also have to influence a larger body of community with the vision. So what do I mean by that? You know, we are in a global connected world. So whatever idea we have, the minute we think about that idea, somebody else has already thought of it, perhaps, right? So how do we influence these bodies of ideas to move forward in the same direction? So one of the ways we can do that, and there are tools that allow us to do this, right? There's things like the internet, where you can post a blog and you can have a wiki within your corporation, you can share your ideas. So as leaders, we have to figure out how do we increase our sphere of influence? Uh, it's either through speaking or writing a blog or writing, writing on a wiki or posting a comment on somebody else's blog if that person is an influencer already. And how do you add other influences to your sphere of influence? This is a skill people didn't have to worry about 10 years ago. Right? All of those people probably didn't have to worry about being an influencer, whereas today we have to, we have to have that skill. The second skill is about being a community blazer. It's not enough just to be a trailblazer, but you have to have a community that follows you. And, and what does that community mean? The communities could be many different communities. I belong to a community of engineers, because I'm an engineer. I belong to a community of women leaders, because I'm a woman. I belong to a community of working mothers, because I'm a working mother. I belong to a community of Asian Americans, because I'm one. You know, and, and so we have multiple communities. I belong to a community of Cornell alumni. I belong to the Twitter community. So there are many communities that we each belong to in our lives. And I don't think that part of it was different. We always had communities where uh, it's a community where you live in, where you work in, et cetera. But these days, you can connect those communities with the role the technology plays. So the challenge we have as leaders is how do you, when do you connect them, when do you keep